we had another mouse in the mouse trap and as you can see he's currently laying upside down there sunbathing Colin the kite's already been up in the raptor tree taking a look at him but because I'm so close he won't come down yet but he will not be there by the evening nothing is wasted here these things the triffids well I should think if they get much bigger we'll have to put one of those red lights on there for aircraft low-flying aircraft look and these two they're not only are they not self isolated it looks like they're from this angle it looks like they're talking to each other you can see that the flower part of them opens up just there I've got them staked up so they come right up here and I don't know if they throw pods out from here but generally the shoots further down in here do actually grow others once I've thrown up one of these and these last right through to October they go they're like that's so tough it's unbelievable I have to get a machete to cut those things down but they are very very unusual and I've got I think 11 throwing these spires up this year now these are my swim guys in fact I need to move down here by the side of the lilies really don't I let's put the camera back from the water's edge I don't want to spook anything I haven't bought my mat so please don't kick off the keyboard warriors because I haven't got a mat with me or got the wrong size net or something right I'm going to sit here in the seat of fame um, in fact let me put this that way okay first into the lake it's going to be this one let's put that down that's my standard 50 50 mix of Bailey's number one horse feed and bran about half each I'm going to damp that down put it in the feeder and we'll just drop it down underwater and see what it looks like okay so I've got it mixed up there it's just going to take let me put that camera down for you people get my feeder in this case I'm just using one that they use for pellets because it's got little plastic grips inside there I don't know if you're going to see that little grips it also helps hold the uh, the bait in there it's got a weight here and it's a fairly smallish size I would call that sort of match size that one so I'm just going to put some ground bait in there I'm not going to squeeze it hard the big thing is you can put it in there hard and squeeze it hard and it's going to take longer to come out so I'm going to put some in and around it now I'm not going to squeeze it hard just about what I would cast 20 yards with okay and I'm going to drop it in from a bit of height and you'll just see as it goes down through the water very very shallow here it is probably about 15 inches deep because it's obviously evaporating with the uh, warmth of the weather and we'll see what that looks like This one is just an ordinary uh, shop bought one. My previous one was agricultural feed supplier for animal foodstuffs, for horses in fact, because it's cheap and cheerful. This is a shop bought one. Now this is called carp and coarse pellets. I'm not making any plugs for anybody. Just what it says, long range attraction. Essential amino profile. Oh my God, I can't, I, hang on a minute. I'll fall in the, in the back of the pond chemosensory stimulation okay whatever I'm gonna put it in the feeder and see what it looks like damp it first don't overwet these commercially shop bought ones you can put too much water in but you cannot take it out that's my old saying
Oh, this one is, this is a two mil pellet. Very, very fine pellets like this. Now, you can put these in quite dry or you can damp them. I strongly suggest damping them first. Now, while I'm doing that, I'm just gonna give them a couple of minutes to soak. You can also soak these larger pellets. Now they've had some maggots in there because I can see, if I pull that down, dead flies. That's what happens to the maggots, they turn into flies. So we pick him up, God knows how long he's been in there. We'll leave him floating on the water and we'll see if anything comes up, newt, to attack him. There we go. So these pellets, you can throw them in loose. Sometimes they float, sometimes they sink. Um, but you, you know, I strongly recommend soaking these. Now the way to soak these, the best way really is this. I'm gonna use a tiny amount in there because that's all I want for the feeder. So I'm gonna overfill that with water. Now this is totally in contrast to what you normally say is, don't put too much water in because you can't take it out. This way, you can take it out by putting the lid on and then inverting it like this. And because this is a live bait container for maggots and stuff like that, it's got holes in the water will run out. So imagine that's, let's say, half full. You put the lid on. You move everything out of the way, Graham. You can just work them around like this. You just let them, let's say you're gonna give it two minutes, three minutes, something like that. You got them totally, totally soaked. Let them soak for a couple of minutes and then you turn it upside down camera leads out of the way, put it down, you might be able to see this, ready? Now you should be able to see the water comes out of the holes, so you can just leave this on the bank. I'm going to leave it, say, just down there, this is if I was fishing, so I'm getting that ready while I tackle up, say, five, ten minutes, letting that soak, and then it's ready for putting in the feeder. That way it won't be too wet and those pellets I've got time to soak up a little bit of water as well. If I lift it up, you see all the water's coming out, you just got to give it a shake every now and then. And just let it do its stuff. Meanwhile, the clouds coming in. The micro pellets have soaked up, so I'm going to put those in the feeder. We'll see what they look like. I joke not, and it's probably because it's white, but my own mix of ground bait has just got movement going across the top. It's either frogs and or tadpoles. Or maybe newts, might be the world famous newts. So here's my feeder. That's with like the micro pellet in there. Let's drop it in the water and see what it looks like. Meantime, it's still coming out of here. Look, you can see this hopefully. Right, both of those uh, tubs of pellets, they both soaked up. That's a micro pellet, just about to put it in, but same you go in and out, I'll, uh, I'll do the two together, you know, one after the other. So the first one going in is the micro pellet.
finally there's this one which is a professional feeder one that's for a match one it's a lot finer it's got lots of different goodies in there um, they get smells there's tons and tons of these ground baits out there so it's a feeder easy to mix powerful natural attractors and it's got all the smells and perfumes and god knows what else i can't personally smell them but um, we'll put some in, in there as you can see it's brown you think they can't see it was my own plain old white ground bait i can see and i've just seen fish fish <laughs> god almighty that's sad isn't it i've just seen that frogs or newts or something going over it, so they're attracted to it but it could be just as a white background and i can see it but this is a professional one for match fishermen i think this one is going to look a little bit different underwater. So the most important thing that you should take from that, five different types of ground bait in the feeder, just regular feeder like this one. A bigger feeder will put more feed in there, obviously. The biggest thing to remember, this is my experience, just the way I do it, when I cast out, it's a bit like fishing with a waggler float. Just before I hit the water, I try and just feather that spool on the reel so that the feeder slows, but the hook length, the length from the feeder to your hook and your bait goes a bit farther out so it doesn't go down in one big tangle clump so when it hits the feeder will pull that back straight like this even though you cast it past the uh, you know the hook bait's gone past the feeder as it goes down through the water it's going to do this and pull the bait down on top of it so you think great it's going to sit right on top of the feeder but if you notice how much comes out when I just pop the feeder and if you do that after it's hit the water five seconds ten seconds I just go bang wind down pause bang just trying in my mind just pop it about that much so as i'm doing that it's doing two things it's making a trail of bait which you can see down there with the camera it leaves a long trail of bait also what it does is the feeder is then up here and you've pulled or straightened out your hook link like this so when you get a fish bite and pick up the bait and move off it should give you a better indication so there you go really basic tips for beginners i hope you guys catch some fish with it Stay watching, stay tuned. We'll try and find some more little tips like this. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget, Mike's TA Outdoors. If you just want to watch something, look, they're both free to watch, guys. It's a bit of a win-win, I'd have thought. See you next time. There's something over that, guys. There's, I'm going to try and go in there slowly. Sorry, it's just a bit like fishing, isn't it, really? I just see something moving over that bait there. Difficult on my age to even stop fishing. Look at that lot. You can see the trail I've made there. <laughs>